Minister, in simple terms, what exactly does this deal mean today? Ireland has borrowed a, a lot of money uh, from the European funds and uh, we're very grateful to our European partners for uh, giving us loans at reasonably low interest rates uh, to fund our needs when we couldn't get money in the markets and that was what funded the bailout program. Uh, these loans were for different lengths of time, different maturities and at the finance minister's meeting in Dublin uh, some weeks ago we negotiated an extension of the terms of the loans. In other words, the maturities of the loans were lengthened. Now what it means in, in, in hard cash is that between 2015 and 2022, we'll now have to borrow two, 20 billion less in the markets than we would have if we didn't get the extension of the maturities. We'll still be borrowing the money, but we'll be getting it on a guaranteed basis from the European funds. And of course, uh, because we'll be looking for less in the markets, uh, other lenders will be more disposed to lend to us, and they'll be more disposed to lend to us at competitive interest rates. So it certainly is, is, is enormous help in exiting the programme and getting fully sustained finance in the markets again. It's obviously helpful in terms of exiting the programme, but there are still some unanswered questions in terms of that exit, particularly in relation to the banks, uh, question mark over whether or not there's going to be uh, a stress test, when that's going to be, and also perhaps what that could actually mean in terms of a requirement for more money for the banks too. Well, the primary factor which put us into a bailout programme was the collapse of the banking system. So it would be unreasonable to expect that either the IMF or the European authorities would say you're out of the programme without stress testing the banks again uh, to see what level of capital requirement they now have. Uh, we're negotiating uh, that the stress testing would be lined up with the general testing of banks across Europe and that will be some time we understand now in early 2014. We also have agreement with the Troika that the same uh, rules of stress testing will apply in Ireland as apply uh, across the European Union. Now, when we were stress tested previously, we needed a capital requirement of 10.5%. Under the new rules, which were applied already to both Cyprus and Spain, we, under the new stress test, a capital requirement of 9% is what will be required. Now that 1.5% reduction makes a difference of over 2 billion in the possible capital requirements. Uh, so I'm quite optimistic of the outturn. Now even if as uh, bad debts crystallize in the SME sector or on the market sector in our main banks uh, and uh, extra capital is required, uh, we'll be given maybe 12 to 18 months uh, to source that capital. Uh, but so far uh, we're operating on sparse information because the purpose of the stress testing is, is to decide if capital is required and if it is, how much. So speculating in advance uh, doesn't help very much. Uh, but we will be, uh, you know, getting our own central bank to do preliminary work in preparing the Irish banks for stress testing. And uh, at present, taking all the impaired mortgages and SME mortgages into account, uh, we have sufficient capital uh, to handle that level of debt and be above 9% uh, core tier one capital. Finally, Minister, in relation to banks, uh, obviously a key thing for Ireland is the establishment of the European stability mechanism, which could provide bank funding in future. There's a key meeting coming up in June. How hopeful are you that that meeting could actually deliver uh, on the announcement which was made um, almost 12 months ago now at the European Council wh when they spoke about the ESM recapitalising banks directly? Well, Banking Union is the big European project at present and it's in a number of pieces. And the Irish Presidency has got 
the Capital Requirements Directive through. We've got agreement on that. We've got the single supervisory mechanism uh, where the central bank in Frankfurt will be the regulator rather than the Irish central bank, you know, with, with certain conditions. We've got that through. The third piece is the resolution arrangements. Uh, that is, you know, you're separating the sovereign from the banks and in future the taxpayers won't be bailing out banks across Europe. You'll have bail-ins using the resources of the individual banks to bail in. We'd hope to advance that very significantly at the June meeting. Now the work is continuing in parallel then with the European Stability Mechanism, but that will not conclude uh, in June and it's the last piece of a complex jigsaw which will be put in place and we won't be in, in a position uh, to see uh, what the details of that are until into next year.